polite, okay? You know, uh, if y'all want to come up front, y'all could just go ahead and come on up front. Hallelujah. Okay. Joanne and Michelle saying, well, I got her seat back. We can sit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tell you about you come up and sit beside Belinda. You know, I'd love to just preach to you, good-looking man, you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How many of y'all are just happy? How many of y'all got all your shopping done? Y'all got, how many of y'all still got to shop? Man, it don't even feel like Christmas to me, man. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but it just has not felt like Christmas. I feel like I'm just going to give everybody some money and say, hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, we got, we got some money takers back there. But, uh, but man, it's just hard, man. I just, uh, me and Belinda just ripped out our whole kitchen, and uh, so now we have no stove, no oven. Uh, we have nothing. We're going to be eating out for days. Hallelujah. So uh, pray for us because... That's not really the best thing to do around Christmas time. You like to, you know, maybe cook some meals every now and then, and, and we're going to do that. But, uh, but anyway, before I get started, I'm real excited um, about our fast coming up. Uh, we actually moved it up a few days, okay? We're going to start it on Monday, January the 2nd, okay? Um, we're going to start it Monday, January 2nd, and it'll be done Sunday the 22nd. And I felt like, you know, why wait, you know, another week? Why not just go ahead and let's jump out and let's do this thing? So... Enjoy the next two weeks, and again, you're free not to fast. Nobody's, you're not signing a waiver and a commitment form, okay? There's none of that. It's all voluntary, but I promise you, if you'll do this, it will change your life. It really will, okay? Um, I know it, it will change your life physically, for sure, if you'll do it, uh, but it will change your life spiritually as well. So we're going to do it, and I'm just kind of putting this out there for everybody what I'm probably going to do is like a 6 to 6 fast. That means I'm going to fast in between 6 and 6. That means at 6.01, you can eat everything you wanted to eat between 6 and 6. Deal? Okay? That's not a bad deal. It's not like we're saying, look, we're not going to eat at all. Okay? This is a doable, doable fast that the Israelites did a lot in the Old Testament. They would fast from sunup to sundown. So we're just asking everybody to, to partner with us. And you say, well, maybe you can't do that. Do what you can do, okay? So you maybe can start at 6, and maybe by 12 o'clock, you have just went as far as you can go. Okay, day one, that's cool, okay? Day two, you may be able to make it to 1 o'clock. Keep working at it, amen? Because I really believe if you will do this, it will change your life, amen? And we're believing for great things. So I'm probably going to do a little bit more than just fast. And you'll find out when you start doing it, you're going to start getting some touches of the Lord, and you'll want to go a little bit further, a little bit further. Because what you're doing is, is you're practicing your spirit being in charge and your flesh not being in charge. Right now, our flesh is telling us what we want to eat after we leave here. Our flesh tells us what we want for breakfast the next day. Our flesh is really involved in wanting to pick out our next meals for us. Amen? So again, we want to put our spirit in charge as we start the new year and take our, our flesh and set it down for a little while. And if you'll do that, I promise you, it will make a difference. Amen? And I also want to say, how many of y'all uh, enjoyed going caroling last night? Hallelujah. It was fun, man. It was a blast, man. I mean, uh, you know, I'd like to say a special thanks to uh, Kevin and Belinda for bringing the trailer and decorating it. And, and uh, man, we had a, I mean, it was like a roll cage, man. We could have put babies in there and they would have been all right. It was amazing. And we just rode through the subdivision, man, just kind of singing if you want to call it that, and uh, we was having a good time and making a joyful noise, handed out some gifts, had people out there videoing and taking pictures of us as we was going through there. Uh, you know, you got to watch. You got to watch the religious world as well as the is the world in general, because they'll tell you, you know what, man, doing that kind of stuff just ain't ain't safe nowadays. People don't want that stuff. I didn't see none of that. Did anybody else was out there? Did y'all see any of that? No. It was people happy that we was running through there. Same thing with knocking on doors and inviting people to church. People say, oh, I wouldn't do that, man. Uh-uh, man. Somebody come to my door, I tell them, get away. Brother, I've, been do I've done it for years, and I'm yet to find somebody to be rude and ugly to me. Now, they may not come to the door, okay, but I I'm yet to find somebody cuss me out and be ugly to me. But what is the first thing the devil's going to tell you when you go talk to somebody about Jesus? Oh, they ain't going to want to hear it. They're going to tell you to shut up, mind your own business. I, ain't, I don't want nothing to do with that. Try it one day and just see what happens. You'll be shocked. There's people out there that need to hear it. They want to hear it. They'd love to hear some good news. We live in a world of what? Bad news, man. There's a lot of bad news going on. So look, a little good news, and don't open up the conversation with, you know, something like this. Hey, man, if you died right now, where would you go? Would you go to heaven or hell? 
Would you bust hell wide open? Or would you get to go to heaven? Yeah, start it smooth. Hey, man, Jesus loves you. <laughs> you know, just something sweet. You'll see. It'll make a difference. Amen? Glory to God. Well, we will be doing Facebook Live on Christmas morning. So uh, I will be doing a service Christmas morning. It will be a full-fledged service. I will sing and dance and preach a word. Hallelujah. So please. You got to tune in just to see me sing and dance. Hallelujah. But yeah, y'all don't leave me hanging Christmas morning. And don't do this right here with your phone. Okay, we're watching. Come on. Come on. Y'all hang in there with me now, okay? Because I'm going to be right there with y'all. So show me some love. And don't throw some emojis up there and then go walk off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Woo! Now, come on. Y'all hang in there with me, okay? We're going to have a good time. Glory to God. Well, today's message, before I get into it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray. But we're going to get into a message I'm calling, What is so amazing about Christmas? What is so amazing about this day? You know, if I ask that question to you, think about your answer as we pray. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, and we just thank you. Thank you for this beautiful day, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for everybody that's here today, Father, that we didn't come just to hear from a man. No, we come to hear from you, Father, today. So, Holy Spirit, I ask you to open up our ears, open up our eyes. Let us see and hear what you have to say to us. Holy Spirit, speak the stuff, speak to our heart about things that we're not even, that I'm not even saying, Father. Speak to them in Jesus' name. Show them things to come, Holy Spirit, about their business, about their family, about their life, Father God. I just pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we lift up Jesus, that, Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you touch every single person in this building. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen, amen, amen. So what is so amazing about Christmas? Is it the gifts? Is it the time off? I mean, uh, those are good, okay? And there is a lot of good things that are associated with Christmas, but, but to me, there is one very important, which I would call the most important thing that happened Christmas Day, that happened on that Christmas Day. I mean, I would say this is above all, and I believe when I do give it to you, you're probably going to feel the same way, that, that it, is, it is a big deal. I think it's the biggest deal ever. But, uh, but I'll share with you that in just a minute. But did you know that the whole world marks time by Christmas? The whole world does. The whole world. Our history books and the rest of the world will refer time as B.C., which is before Christ, and A.D., which is... It is not after his death. See, you've come today already to learn a little bit. I, I love it. Glory to God. Amen? It's not after his death. I want that to sink in for a minute because all y'all looking at me like you are out of your freaking mind, buddy. I'm going to give you some context with it, okay? Don't, don't look at me like I'm weird. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But A.D. is, is uh, the word for A.D. is Anno Domini. Anno is Latin for in the year, and Domini is Latin for Lord. So Adonai Domini, which is A.D., translate is as the year of our Lord. You think about it. It couldn't be after his death because then we would already be 33 years into A.D. So it couldn't be at his death. It had to be at his birth. That was the start of the year of our Lord. Now we're in the 2022nd year of our Lord. Amen? So it's not after his death. Amen? It is the year. That's when the year... But did you know that history is marked by B.C. and A.D.? Everything is. Now you do have some idiots out there. I don't want to say idiots some very uneducated people, okay, that are using BCE and CE, which is, you know, uh, just, just another term, a worldly term of not putting Jesus in the mix there. They're trying, but they still use the same beginning and end, amen? Uh, so, I mean, when we see this right here, it lets us know that there was something very important that happened that Christmas morning. The calendar stopped from BC and it started AD. That right there should send, you know, shockwaves through the world that hey look maybe there is something to this jesus guy amen but i want to read um uh, i want to read the uh story of of christ being born in matthew 1 18 i read it earlier but i'm gonna read it again for everybody else that's got here amen okay <laughs> but uh matthew 1 18 it says now the birth of our of jesus christ was as follows after his mother mary was betrothed to joseph before they came together she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. We're going to come back to that. But just hang on to it. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. You know, he really loved Mary. He really did. You've got to realize something. In their day, 
Had it been found that she got pregnant out of wedlock, you would be stoned to death. And I mean, he was trying to do this to save her life. He did not want her to, 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 to go through all of that, but he didn't want to, get, he didn't want to be in trouble neither. Amen? So, uh, but while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Now, how many of you know that jo uh, uh, Joseph woke up from that and went, whoo, wow, I thought she was lying to me the whole time, telling me the Holy Spirit and I got her pregnant. You know, put yourself in their shoes, man. He's a man, you know, just like we men are. Your wife comes home one day and says, hey, I got pregnant by the Holy Ghost. Yeah, right. <laughs> your mama. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, you get out of my house. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm divorcing you right now, or I'm not going to get married to you right now. So he had the same feeling. So this really brought comfort to Joseph because he loved her, and he wanted to believe her, but he had a natural mind. He's thinking, whoa, no, people don't get pregnant by some spirit. Amen? They get pregnant other ways. Amen? So he's fighting it, and the, and the angel knew that. God knew that. So he woke up. He was comforted, and, she was, uh, and, 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 and he went on to tell her, Tell him, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now, Jesus in Hebrew, uh, and what they would call Jesus, or, or the Hebrews call Jesus, is what? Yeshua. Yeshua. That's the word, that's the word they use for, for Jesus uh, in, in Israel. They call him Yeshua. Yeshua means God will bring salvation. Okay? God will bring salvation. So, so what makes Christmas so amazing? What makes it so amazing? Before I share that with you, I, want, I got something else I want to share with you, okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, Isaiah, he gave this prophecy that we see. I didn't finish reading that. Let's go back up. I'm doing a lot of take twos today, so you all just hang in there, okay? I mean, I had to do one before the service started, so I'm doing one again, okay? Take two, we're going to back up and finish up Matthew, okay? Matthew uh, 122, it says, So all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Isaiah has the most, this was the prophet Isaiah that gave this, he has the most prophecies about the Messiah or Jesus coming to earth than any other prophet in the Bible. Isaiah gave this prophecy at a time when Syria was planning an attack against Israel. King Ahaz was the king of Judah uh, in that day. And there was a, a king of, of Syria that was planning an attack on King Ahaz. Now, King Ahaz was an ungodly king, very ungodly, okay? Never was godly, okay? So there was, a, a, there was an ungodly king running Israel, okay? And then, uh, then it goes on to say, and King Ahaz was the king of Judah at the time, and he was an ungodly king. But Isaiah had a word from the Lord to give him concerning the battle that was being planned against him. Isaiah told him that this plan is going to come to nothing. Don't worry about it at all. The reason King Ahaz was concerned was because he had a plan. He had a plan with the leader of Assyria, not Syria, but a different king, okay? And he was going to sell out the children of Israel to save him because he knew he, his time was short. So he felt like if he cut a deal with Assyria, then that would save him and then the Israelites would go into slavery, okay? But this is what Isaiah tells him in Isaiah 7.10 to King Ahaz. He says, Moreover, the Lord spoke again to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign for yourself from the Lord your God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, nor will I test the Lord. That sounds spiritual, okay? That sounds real spiritual. I'll explain that in just a minute. Verse 13, then he said, Hear now, O house of David, it is, it is, is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall, shall call his name Emmanuel. That's where Matthew gets it right there from Isaiah the prophet. So we see that Jesus is prophesied 740 years before it happened. So when people want to knock the Bible and say, oh man, that Bible, man, it contradicts itself. You can't believe that Bible, man. You know? No, this Bible is 100% accurate. Everything in it has happened just like it said it would happen. No different with the Son of God. 
But when King Ahaz said that he would not ask the Lord or test him, he was not, he was not, he was not going to do that because he did not want to test God. It was because he did not want to trust the Lord with a word. This happens in all generations. He didn't want the prophet Isaiah to give him a word because he knew that if he gave him a word, he was going to be held accountable to walk that word out. That happens to all of us here today, all generations. God gives you a word, guess what you got to do? you got to put your trust in that word and do it. So many people don't want to hear the word. They want to they step back. No, 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 I'm good. It, it, it's better me not to know than have to hear it and have to do it. There's a lot of I've actually heard somebody say that. I remember back years ago when the Braves were doing real good back in the 90s, and they were you know, winning World Series and stuff like that. And a brother of mine left church, and he was in a hurry because we had Sunday night church. And you know, the playoffs and stuff, they'll be on Sunday night, you know. So he was leaving to go, and, and I was about to share something with him. He said, no, 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 I don't want to hear it. I'll be held accountable for it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. And he was leaving. Well, that was the same thing going on with King Ahaz. He knew he had a deal with the Assyrians, and he had a plan. But God knew he had a plan too. Amen? So he didn't want that word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And that's like many of us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How was that assigned to King Ahaz? It's actually assigned to all generations because Jesus wasn't coming for another 740 years. It was a sign because Jesus had to come through the tribe of Judah, through the house of David. But Jesus had not come yet, and because he had not come yet, that is a sign that Syria will not prevail. That country couldn't go away because Jesus the Messiah had not come yet. So he was telling, you know, King Ahaz, chill, brother. Until Jesus comes, there's nothing going to happen. And it's the same thing with me and you. God has had, he's got a purpose and a plan in our lives. And did you know that the devil can't stop you? from doing what God's called you to do. He can't. He don't have the power to stop you, just like he didn't have the power to stop the children of Israel and, and, and them go down. You will not go down if you'll trust in the Lord thy God. Amen? And the reason why you can't go down is because God has put a plan and a purpose in your life. Now, you may say, well, wait a minute, time out, bro. I see a lot of people going down. Amen? Now, I will say this, just as a, a little bit of an advice to you, the only way you can go down is as if you decide to go down. If you decide to disobey God, you have the keys of your life, amen? God is on your side, and he will help you go over the mountain, amen, through the valley. But you have to be willing to trust him, trust his word. He don't lie. And it does take some faith to trust him when there's eyes of the evil one all around looking at you and putting pressure on you. You ain't going to make it. You ain't got enough money. You can't get past this. This is the end. This is over. He comes to all of us, amen? But if we'll trust in the Lord thy God, I'm telling you, he cannot prevail in our lives, amen? This is true with everyone here today. God has a purpose for your life, and the devil can't stop it from coming to pass. You can stop it, but not the devil. So what is so amazing about Christmas? What is so amazing about Christmas? Now, I don't know about you, but this is what makes Christmas so amazing to me, okay? That, number one, God became human God became human okay y'all ready to go eat some people say yeah man we're ready to go okay this is why Christmas changes everything there is an attack on Jesus and him being the only way to heaven today like any other generation unlike any other generation people fight the name of Jesus if you don't believe me man go to work and start talking about Jesus 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 you can say God all day long. Won't get into much kickback. But you start talking about Jesus, it does something to the atmosphere, y'all. You go to school and talk about God, you ain't going to get kicked out. You go to school with shirts that say Jesus, Jesus, and you start talking about Jesus, and you say Jesus, you say Jesus anywhere. Why? Because there's devils everywhere. And it's a mention of that name. Devils tremble, man. they scared of that name. And that name has been given to me and you, amen? The name that is above every name. So what name should we be shouting from the rooftop? Jesus. Jesus. When you post to something, I thank God. So I thank Jesus. I thank Jesus. Use Jesus all the time. Tick the devil off. If the world's telling us not to talk about it, that's a good sign we need to be talking about it. Amen? So whatever the world's, where they're getting their information from is probably the evil one. He don't want to talk about Jesus. Amen? Because the Jesus we talk about changes people's lives. Glory to God. The deity of Jesus and his word are being attacked heavily by ungodly and some religious groups. I'm telling you guys, I say this as a pastor of 14,000 people. Hallelujah. 
Can I, can, I, can I share something with you? There is a, there is a bishop in uh, Nigeria. Bishop. I can't say his name. We'll just use bishop, okay? And do you know that in Nigeria, their exchange rate on money is, you know, our dollar is way, worth way more. I want to say it's like 10 to 1 or something like that. It's crazy, the exchange rate. Did you know he has a 50,000-seat auditorium right now that houses, you know, his church? He is building, which will be done probably next year, okay? It's almost really done. He's building a church that will seat, I want to say it's almost 140,000 people. Debt-free, don't own nobody. It's a mile and a half wide, and a, it's a mile and a half each way. One mile, 1.5 miles each way. It is humongous in Nigeria, okay? I'm just here to tell you, all these buildings you see that are built for NFL and, and, and the basketball arenas and all that, they are going to be used for the glory of God. You mark it down in our country. And 2023 is going to be a year where we're going to start seeing some of that happen. In our, and I want us to be expecting it. These performing art centers that they have in, in Henry County, they are meant to be housed by the people that need Jesus, amen? I believe with all my heart, Henry County is going to be flipped for Jesus, amen? Does anybody else believe that? We're going to see the gospel spread, amen? But I just wanted to share that with you because, man, I mean, a church that big, 1.5 miles, you ought to see it, man. It is incredible how big it is. It's going to be a dome. I mean, it's just in in insane. But this is what God is doing. And I'm telling you, God ain't done with America yet, amen? I don't care what the news say. I don't care what people say. God is moving in this country, okay? As long as we got breath, God is moving in this country. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, with that being said, who is behind this, this ungodly, challenging Jesus? He's not deity. He's not the way to heaven. Who's doing that? That would be the devil. Amen? But Jesus had a confrontation with his disciples in Matthew 16, verse 13. It says, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea, Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. The question, who do you say that I am, is being asked by Jesus to you here today. And your answer has eternal significance on it. That is the answer that we should be asking ourselves as well as, who do you say Jesus is? Guys, do y'all realize that we're just a few breaths away from Jesus coming back to this earth? I mean, man, do you see the signs of the times all around us? I mean, they're wanting to go to a digital currency. They're wanting to go to a cashless society. That all plays into uh, Revelation chapter 13, that we're going to have a cash, a one-world currency. And the only way you can have a one-world currency is you've got to do away with bills. That's how close we are, y'all, to this thing wrapping up. That should really keep us up at night, not, 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 not other things, but it should keep us up. Well, God, don't come back right now. Get a little bit more time. A little bit, I got some family. They need Jesus. My neighbors need Jesus. There's people in, in my workplace that need Jesus. Man, if we do not cry out to God for the salvation of the souls of the people, who will? It's our job, y'all. It's our job. That's why I say every time you let go of something special in your life, you die to yourself, and you're raised to new life in Christ. The more you conquer things, the less things conquer you. Amen? And that's where the church has got to get. Just like in the book of Acts, when they would sell everything they had and brought it to the feet of the apostles. Because the people mattered. They wanted to see God's kingdom come more than they wanted their kingdom to come. Because when you breathe your last, guess what? Your kingdom on this earth is over. Everybody else gets to enjoy what you had. So if you live a life to try to make everybody else's life better and you live a life to try to reach as many people for Jesus, when you die, you're going to feel uh, complete. Amen? When you use your resources, when we as the church use our resources to help people, to reach people, I'm telling you, it's going to change your life, man. You know, you may have some, you know, some people in your family that you just uh, you don't want to be around. Pray about being a blessing to them this year. Do something special. Look at them as a human being that needs God. Amen? Maybe there's people in your family you ain't talked to in a while. Maybe you just need to text them or call them or send them a gift. Man, let our material things reach people that don't know God. Amen? Because, man, we're only here for a short time. Hallelujah. We're only here for a short time. 
Let's give it away. Let's see. You know, God, you gave your son. I'm going to try to see how much in 2023 I can give away. I'm going to try to give myself to be broke. Just try to outgive God. God, you ready? You ready up there? Okay, buddy. It's on, dog. Let's do this thing. Come on. Go into the grocery store. You're walking around. <laughs> God, who are you looking at? Who are you looking at today? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that one over there? Yeah, I got you. I got you. I've seen this, uh, and you see these on uh, these little short clips and stuff on, on social media. Yep. Does anybody else got social media? Anybody else watch videos? Okay. Anyway, there's, there's this one I was watching. Is he would actually, while they were, you know, they were sliding all their stuff through the thing, and, and, and they're kind of focused on this, he walked up there and just slid his card and walked away and paid for it. He did this over and over again. And people just like, what did he do? He just paid for all your stuff. Wait, 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 wait. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to react. I'm telling you, the blessing of the Lord will touch and change people's lives. That's why God wants you to be able to let go, and he wants you to be able to receive. Let go and receive. As you let go, you receive more so you can do more. Amen? There is nothing greater than giving to people. Can everybody testify? Have you ever gave something to somebody and seen the smile on their face? It matters. I'm telling you, man. And it can be some of the littlest things. I'm serious, something little. But be like, really? It's mine? Yeah, man, I give it to you. And that's just where God wants us. Like he gave his son 2023. Let it be a, a, a year that we just live to give. Not just to the church. Give everywhere. I mean, don't, this is one place, yeah. We, we want to we have a nice building that we can bring people to, to fellowship and grow in Jesus, yeah. But man, there's hurting people all around, amen? You can spread your love everywhere. It don't have to be just money. It can be a hug. It can be going to work and saying, how are you doing today? You look nice today, Connie. Good job. I, I, we love you. Thank you for working here. Thank you. I mean, just being kind to people, amen? Just being kind to people. Hallelujah. It makes a difference, glory to God. We know he is God because he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. It is called the Immaculate Conception. I'm using big words, y'all. My last service before 2023. Got to throw a good word out there. Immaculate is kind of like your house. Because I'm sure your house is immaculate, right? All right? Well, really here it's meaning pure. Jesus, <laughs> I know our houses are kind of probably a little messed up by now. But Jesus, what it's saying is, is Jesus came and he was conceived purely through purity. Matthew 1, 18 says this. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother, Mary, was betrothed or engaged to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Matthew 1, 20. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary as your wife. For what she is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Did you know the Holy Spirit has put stuff inside of you? He has given you things. He has, he has, he has put stuff in you. There is things in you that the Holy Spirit wants to bring out that only he put in you in 2023. And I'm telling you, he can do it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many of y'all are hot? You know, that's a question you never ask in church. Why did I do that? Okay. <laughs> The egg was from the woman, but the seed was not, from, was not from a man, but God through the Holy Spirit. This is important because it says in the Bible over ten times that the iniquity of the fathers goes to the third and fourth generation. It never says the iniquity of the mothers. The iniquity passes through the seed of the father. Jesus was born of a woman, but not a man. Why? So that he could be fully human and also fully God. The deity and humanity of Christ, God became a human, y'all. He passed through the woman, but his seed was of an incorruptible seed. It was from God Almighty. All of us came for, I hope I didn't, I don't make you feel bad. We came from a corruptible seed, okay? We was born as a sinner, all right? Because sin was passed down from Adam. And it's not been stopped until Jesus came to the earth. And now we can be what the Bible says, born again. Amen? Now when we're born again, now we're born again of an incorruptible seed. Okay? But as a, as a, as a before the born again experience, you and I have been born as of a corruptible seed. But first Peter said this right here. He said, having been born again, not of a corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. The most amazing thing about Christmas is that God became a man. God did not send a messenger. He personally came to be the messenger. God did not send someone to redeem you. He came himself. Amen? There was a judge. There was this judge, and he had a friend who got a speeding ticket. 
And his friend asked him if he would take care of it for him, and he said he would. A few, a few weeks later, when the friend saw him, he said, thanks for dismissing that ticket for me. He said, I didn't dismiss it. Oh, what do you mean you didn't dismiss it? Then what did you do with it? He said, I paid for it. The friend said that I didn't want you to pay for it. I wanted you to do your judge thing. Anybody else knew a cop? Try to get off a ticket. Hey, bro, man, I, I know you work down there, man. I got a ticket. Man, could you, could you swing some things and maybe, you know, get that thing erased? I've done it. I've done it. Hallelujah. Save your money, man. What you talking about, man? Look at me all holy. Come on, hallelujah. But anyway, he, he asked me, hey, don't you do that judge thing and dismiss it? The judge asked him, were you guilty? He said, yes. Then justice demanded that the penalty be paid. Then the judge said that if I'm a righteous judge, then I can't dismiss the charges against you, but I can't pay for them myself. God did not dismiss the charges that were against you and me. He paid for them with his life. God became human. Number two reason that makes uh, Christmas so amazing is God became human. So what was the first one? What was the second one? Mm. Y'all can hang on to them two points, right? Y'all won't forget them? Are we good? Okay. If you walk away from anything today, you're going to know God became human. Hallelujah. Well, God became human, but what I wanted you to see is in the first part we talked about his deity. Here we're going to talk about his humanity. There's two sides to this story, okay? God didn't just come as God. He came as a man. He had to if it was going to be legal. So, he was born and his life was dependent upon others to take care of him. Imagine that, y'all. God was born into this world and somebody else had to take care of God. That is insane, y'all. Can you imagine Mary? She's holding the creator of the universe in her hands. That's why, what was it they said, you know, blessed uh, are the breast that feed the Son of God. It's in the Scripture. Y'all look at me like I ain't talking about it. It's just in the Bible. Like I'm sinning or something up here. It was in there, man. Somebody yelled it out and was saying, blessed be, you know, the blank uh, of the woman. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, like I'm not, come on, man. <laughs> you know? But, but, but it's true. Blessed be that woman for, for being able to do this. Amen? Hallelujah. I mean, I ain't a woman. Let me say that again in English. I'm not a woman. But if I was... <laughs> I would love to have been Jesus' mama, okay? I'm just going to be real with you, amen? That would have been an honor, hallelujah. The creator became the creation. So why did he become human? He come human to pay for our sins. John 1, 1 says, In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1, 14 brings this even more clear, that the Word that he's talking about is Jesus, and he became human, John 1, 14 says, and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Second John 7 says, I say this because many deceivers have gone out into the world. See, John even had deceivers in his world. We've got deceivers in our world. Guys, as a pastor, there is going to be sheep in wolves' clothing in these last days. There's going to be pastors that say they're pastors. There's going to be evangelists that say they're evangelists. There's going to be prophets that say they're prophets. But what comes out of their mouth is lies. It's not the Word of God. If y'all only think that the devil is going to use political leaders, you're wrong. He is a master deceiver. And that's why I say, with all the social media that we have today, be careful who you listen to. Because just because they have a church, they have a big congregation, it, it, it does not mean that what they're saying is lining up with the Bible. Be cautious in these last days. If it, if it don't line up with this book right here, if you get a little twinge in your belly like, I ain't never heard that before. If that comes out of your mouth, I would highly recommend you, you begin to look at what you're listening to, okay? Be careful, all right? And I'm saying that with myself, too. Y'all watch me, okay? I need help. Y'all keep me straight, all right? Don't just shake your head and go home. They deny that Jesus Christ came in, the, in a real body. Such a person is a deceiver and an antichrist. Jesus became human to pay for the sins of the world. This is what makes Christmas the most exciting time of the year. Jesus also did this in Hebrews 2.14. He said, because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood, 
For only as a human being could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Death has no power over Christians, y'all. That means when we die, we do not act like those with no hope. When we die, we are transported into life. We leave life and we go to life. We don't taste death at all if you're a follower of Jesus. At all. So that means when somebody dies and they're a Christian, and they'll shed a tear or two. There's nothing wrong with crying. But just know, while you're weeping, they're rejoicing. Hallelujah. They're having a good time. I can tell you that right now. And I'm going to be honest with you. If I don't go up in the rapture and I go by the grave, please, by all means, come and sing unto the Lord at my funeral. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to be rejoicing. Amen. Give her a hug. Give everybody a hug. Maybe shed a tear or two, whatever. But then go eat the potato salad and rejoice that I am in heaven. Hallelujah. I'm going to be shouting up in heaven. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The most amazing thing about Christmas is that God became a human and rescued us from the power that the devil had on us. God became a human. That is, the amaz that is amazing when you think about it. We see it clearly in Isaiah 9, 6, y'all. It says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. You see the child, humanity, son, deity. God became flesh. God redeemed us himself. He didn't give us a list to do in order to go to heaven. He simply said that if you will believe in Jesus, you will be saved from your sins. God paid for your sins personally. As we close, I, I, want, to, you know, I want us to remember the story of Adam and Eve when they were in the garden. And just get a picture of Adam and Eve in that garden. And just picture that Adam is not at the same place as Eve. Eve is at the tree. Eve has just sinned, and she's missed the mark. She's messed up. And Adam is all the way on the other side of the, of the garden. And God comes to Adam, and he goes, Adam, i got some bad news, brother. Your wife's going to die. Your wife's going to die. What do you think that would have done to Adam? Now, we know that conversation didn't go on. But I do believe there was a conversation like that that went on in heaven. When God went to Jesus after that happened, and he said, Jesus, your bride is going to die. Your bride's going to die. They've done something they shouldn't have done. Your bride is going to die. And I think it maybe went like this that Jesus said, Father, I don't want them to die. I don't want them to die. I'll give my life so that they can live. And that's exactly what Jesus did to each and every one of us here. He left heaven to give his life so that his bride could live on. And I'm telling you what, today, that's what makes Christmas so amazing. That God did not hire somebody to come redeem us. He didn't create somebody to redeem us. He came himself to redeem you and to redeem me. That's how much God loves you. That he left the comforts of a palace and all the riches and glory and honor to come down here in this messed up, jacked up world and walked among us. And the Bible says that, that he is a high priest that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He knows what it's like to be in pain. He knows what it's like to hurt. He knows it. And therefore now he's overcome it now we can overcome it through Jesus, amen, and through the finished work of Christ. That's what makes Christmas so amazing, that God became a human so now we could be with him forever, amen? How many of y'all believe that, amen? That's good news, ain't it? Hallelujah, glory to God. This is what we celebrate at Christmas, and this is what's so amazing about Christmas. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father. Hallelujah, we come before you in the name of Jesus, and we just thank you that without Christ, there is no Christmas. We honor you, Father, today. We thank you for sending your Son. And Jesus, we thank you for coming to this, this place, earth, and paying the price so we didn't have to. Paying the fine so we didn't have to do it. You paid the ultimate price. So now that we, which were lost and in darkness, and separated from you, Father. Now we can have a relationship with you through Jesus. 
So as we, as we pray today and as we get ready to have some fellowship and eat, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, or even you're watching online and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, today is your day. You don't have to leave lost. You don't have to turn this off to, be, you know, to, to, to never receive Jesus. Jesus is here ready for you to receive him. And I want to pray with you today. I don't want anybody to leave, whether you, you, you're lost or whether you just drifted away. Maybe you've kind of been doing your own thing, living your own life. Look, let's don't go into 2023 carrying that old baggage stuff. Let's don't do it, amen? There ain't nothing worth leaving Christ over, amen? There's nothing worth going to. Jesus is the way, amen? He's everything. So if that's you here today and you say, Pastor, I want you to pray with me. I want you to pray with me that I would renew my faith in Jesus or I would come to Jesus. I just want you to raise your hand and say, hey, look, pray for me today. Hallelujah. Pray for me today. Glory to God. But we're going to pray because there could be some people watching. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up everybody here and online, Father, that don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I pray right here today, this Christmas season, that they would stop what they're doing and they would fall on their knees and they would call on the name of the Lord. And you said if we did, we shall be saved. So, Father, I thank you for everybody listening to the sound of my voice that they would say yes to Jesus, come into my heart, be the Lord of my life. And I thank you, Lord, for all of those that received him today. Hallelujah, Father. Would make a commitment to go after Jesus with all their heart. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And if you're in this room today and you say, you know what, Pastor, 